So um, as we start, what we're doing, we've got Brian Aspinall here and Tom Hick from Makey Makey. Everybody wave. And I'm going to introduce you a little bit more properly, but I'm going to let people get signed in first. Um, we've got a poll going just to see what grade level you guys are teaching, um, or even if you're not at a school, if you're working in a public library or museum, this is pretty interesting to see come in. Um, what, and just if you're new to Zoom, just to give you a little bit of guidelines, on the right, you should have a chat window where you can chat questions and Brian will answer them at the end. Tom and I are going to kind of monitor that. Um, and we'll, Tom, we're going to turn our audio off when Brian starts talking. Um, also, this is where I really need, oh, we're recording, so we'll probably just upload this to YouTube afterwards instead of going live other than Zoom um, because my button went away. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do now, we've got some people coming in and Brian is, are you ready to go, Brian? Can I introduce you? Sure. Okay. Well, let me introduce, well, I'll introduce myself first, I guess, since I'm talking. Hi, I'm Colleen, and I am the content creator and community engagement for Makey Makey, and um, I just make stuff all day and share it. That's my job, which is super fun. Um, two bubbles down, this is like the Brady Bunch, is Tom Hick. He's, uh, Tom, I'll let you introduce yourself real quick. Hey, everybody, uh, and we should mention that We've got the uh, quite a distance going here because Colleen is in Austin, Texas. Right. I'm in Asheville, North Carolina, and uh, Brian is in somewhere in Canada, maybe <laughs> in the Arctic Circle. We're not sure, uh, but he's going to tell us. And uh, so I am uh, the VP for Education initiatives and I travel a lot uh, leading train the trainer workshops so if you go back to the makey makey website and click on the uh, or find the map of all of our training partners all those little red pins that's where I've been one of those and, is Brian and one of I'm those good. pins is, is <laughs> Brian perfect segue yeah and Brian was you were just in Canada too with we're not with Brian but Tom was just in Canada um, I did forget to, to mention that the content that I create is all on our webpage too, um, enderlabs.makeymakey.com. It's all free. You can sign in with Google Classroom. And I'm sure that some of the uh, projects that Brian's even going to share with you today, you might be able to find there. Um, so without further ado, Brian Aspinall is an educator, a best-selling author. It's one of the reasons we asked him to come join us today because he wrote Code Breaker. Um, and he's a TEDx speaker who's considered one of the brightest STEM innovators in education. His book, Code Breaker, is a great way to get started with coding, and it's actually topping the charts with STEAM education. And it helps you kind of refocus your ideas on uh, assessment and evaluation. And he was recently awarded the Canadian Prime Minister's Award for Teaching and Excellent for Excellence for his work with coding and computational thinking. So we asked him to join us today because he's super enthusiastic and engaging and we can't wait to hear what you have to say. I'm going to go ahead and end this poll uh, and everyone just in case you ask, oh you guys couldn't see the results. Here I'll share the results for a second. Uh, Brian you are, are almost right. Actually look at that. Half the people are from middle school. Yep. So he, he guessed that it would be third through sixth grade uh, mostly which I guess Middle school could be sixth grade. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing that result. And this will be recorded. Uh, if you guys want to say hello in the chat right there, that's that's super awesome. All right, Brian, I'm going to hand it over to you. I see some familiar names on here. Hi, Chris, who's in Quebec. We've got uh, Canada representing here today, which is amazing. Uh, my name is Brian Aspinall, former grade seven and eight teacher. We call it grade seven and eight up here in Canada, not seventh grade, eighth grade. Uh, I taught grades 7 and 8 for about 11, 12 years and have recently joined the Faculties of Ed uh, here in Ontario. So these days I travel like Tom and, and do a lot of Makey Makey workshops uh, and teach teachers at the Faculty of Ed. So super stoked to be on the Makey Makey webinar here today. It's a bit of a trip for me. Let me know if I get all pixelated and yell at me uh, and I'll slow down. Colleen, that's your job. Um, I, it's, this is really a bit of a trip. I've been following Makey Makey since the Kickstarter campaign, I want to say 2012, maybe 2013, somewhere in that ballpark. And I remember purchasing about 40 of them from my classroom 
uh, way back then. So amazing to be here sharing this experience with you all and taking time out of your busy days to, to join us has me super inspired because I know that we're all so, so busy uh, these days and a lot of you are probably in schools right now. So without further ado, let's just jump right in because Makey Makey is a wicked cool tool. Um, but I love starting with this quote just to push thinking that today's technology is the worst technology our students will ever use. And I wrote in code, you know, embracing these kinds of schools, these emerging technologies, where young people think critically, computationally, obviously collaborate, but perhaps use tools and technologies to solve the authentic problems in their own backyard, in their own communities, particularly because we're heading into that Internet of Things era, where the first time in human history, we've got more devices connected to the internet than people. Uh, in my travels, visiting a lot of schools, I still see the, the off and away sign, and, and I respect the off and away sign. And for those of you that don't know what I'm referring to, um, Chris wants my shirt, I see that. <laughs> um, the off and away signs, I'm referring to no cell phones, the banning, the banning of technology. Um, and I realize that there's a lot of liability. There are a lot of pieces in place, but it's time for us to figure this out because we're heading into uh, an era where there's no such thing as off and away. Everything is going to be, everything is connected to the internet. So everything we interact with becomes a data point. And we have to teach our young people to be mindful of information and data and privacy because all of the, to the choices they make and the decisions that that they make using these devices is going to collect data based, based on their behaviors. So without further ado, I need to go back in time to bring it full circle because the more research I do in the constructivist learning space, the further back I've gone, uh, I think it's really important to talk about Rachel Amelia. Uh, learning theories because they're based off of Montessori schools and so over in in Italy back in World War II they started um, you know revamping what what elementary school looked like uh, sorry here in Ontario we don't call we don't have a middle school we just say elementary is uh, K to grade 8 most of our schools in Ontario so what does learning look like in the primary space in the K to 3 space well Reggio Emilia model wants to almost give full control over to the students but I love the last bullet on this slide because it says providing students endless ways to demonstrate learning and, and that bullet alone um, negates or, or contradicts the idea of a testing environment, so to speak, because that's one way for students to uh, demonstrate learning. Um, and so I really like the idea of, of Reggio Emilia because it's, it involves putting kids in that sandbox. Um, and I use the metaphor of the sandbox because uh, Scratch and Makey Makey are that sandbox playground that allows students to solve similar problems in more than one way, which I think is incredibly uh, important. But not just the Reggio Emilia uh, theory, but Piaget's constructivist learning theory, which I'm, I'm sure everybody here um, is, is familiar with the idea that um, in, the, in this learning theory, students construct knowledge of the world by interacting with, with tools, uh, and models to help them sort of construct their own schema of what's happening in the world. So to build on, on their own ideas through experiences. And you'll see there's a quote on my slide there. No one understands my ideas as well as Seymour Papert. Well, Papert worked alongside uh, Piaget back in the early days. And so Papert's got the constructionism uh, learning theory that's based on Piaget's body of work, but he actually created the first block-based uh, coding language, I'm using air quotes, with his team at MIT in his logo. And I'm sure everybody on this webinar, I'm preaching to the choir here, everybody I'm sure is familiar with the uh, logo and, and programming the, the, uh, the turtle. So I'm getting distracted by the chat box. I'm going to ignore that unless Colleen yells at me. But I do see Lifelong Kindergarten, which is a fantastic book. And Mindstorms by Seymour Papert is incredibly timeless. I mean, written in 1980, but you wouldn't know that, you know, if you really read it today, you didn't really look, look at that copyright date it would sound like a lot of the things you know that we're talking about uh, and as we move further and further into the today's space we've got you know mitch resnick and his team at mit also working on the scratch program so that we can engage kids in that block-based coding environment to teach computational thinking skills just giving you a bit of a history here i'm sure everybody knows these two amazing people that kick-started makey makey i want to say again around 2012 Tom will know the exact date, 2012. 
2013, but under the premise of Scratch, projects, passions, projects, peers, and plays, and the idea that everybody is an inventor. And I believe in that, and I believe that by providing kids these opportunities and these spaces to learn, they can do some really, really, really amazing things. Without further ado, let's jump into some examples because we're here to talk about Beyond the Hour of Code. I think the Hour of Code is an incredible, incredible entry point. But I tell people, not a destination. There's a piece about the Hour of Code that creates this idea um, that it is a checkbox almost. And so it's CS Ed Week, you know, Computer Science Education Week last week, we're going to participate in Hour of Code events. We're gonna check that box and then we're gonna move on. And so when I, when I hear people say, oh yeah, scratch and coding, yeah, we did that. For me, it's not a, a unit, it's a tool for learning. It's like making a green screen. It's like having a math set in a math classroom. These are all tools for learning. So I wanna share a few examples that everybody can start with beyond the hour of code. Uh, my assumption is everybody has used Makey Makey and, and done the piano out of the box just to sort of get your feet wet. One of my favorite activities is the interactive bulletin board. And on my slide here, this is a picture from my former classroom. And I think it's a, a great way to start today with this activity because we have the holiday season upon us. And the example I have here, we created a haunted bulletin board team so when our primary friends were doing their parade walk through with their Halloween costumes, they got to interact with the bulletin board. Now, think of it almost like um, an advent calendar, you know, when you open the, the windows for each day uh, on the month of December. So what we had done, we took our blank cork bulletin board and we had, we had stapled up speaker wire to extend the length of our alligator clips because it's copper and it, anything that's a conductor will work. Uh, with Makey Makey. And so we extended the length of our alligator clips connected to Makey Makey and we put tinfoil windows up on the on the cork and then we covered it with our scene. We ran the ground wire from Makey Makey down to the floor and we had tinfoil uh, like a mat on the floor. And so there was a bit of a mini lesson with students because some of them couldn't stand on the ground on the floor with their shoes on because of the rubber soles. They weren't being grounded. So we had a lot of conversations about that. But it was very evident the inquiry and the kids uh, being naturally curious about trying to pull this thing off, particularly because they were doing it for our primary friends, our younger peers. So you on the floor, uh, and then when students would stand on the ground, they would interact by touching parts of the bulletin board space that had, again, those tinfoil windows or, or whatever you want uh, up on that bulletin board. And then all of that connected to Makey Makey and then connected to, in my case, we had uh, a tiny Chromebook that I had, was using connected to a stereo. We wanted students to touch this, the scene uh, and hear scary sounds for Halloween. I actually took this project just last week. I was in my wife's school uh, and we made an interactive Christmas tree by literally wiring the ornaments in the tree and covering them with tin foil. And every time you touched an ornament, it would sing a Christmas carol. And it was such an amazing opportunity for our students to be engaged in this task, but also take ownership and pride in it. It wasn't necessarily a, a direct curriculum project. I mean, it is, if you teach here in Ontario, we have, we have circuits and electricity in grade six and grade nine. Uh, but in our case, we were inquiring and it was a soft skills piece, the empathy, thinking about the problem to be solved, the user's needs, what does the principal want? Where's the tree going? Is it going in the front foyer? All of those pieces were a part of the much larger conversation of using Makey Makey to bring the Christmas tree to life. One of my most favorite, favorite, favorite projects. I highly recommend you try it out. And, and you don't have to be the expert. When I first started this project, all, it was a student's idea and we just ran with it. And just having a, uh, an understanding of what Makey Makey is capable of is incredibly important. And that's, that's let the students bring, bring the rest. Uh, I always say we need to be the curriculum experts, not the technology experts. Let the kids bring the tools and the devices. It's our job to recognize curriculum in those moments so we can engage in the authenticity of those teachable moments. Okay, how are we doing? Quarter after. Next example, the Makey Makey Wire Game is a huge, huge, huge favorite of mine. It is on the Makey Makey website. I've also blogged about it. I've also recorded some videos about it. Uh, I use this as an introduction to structures. I teach structures in grade seven science here. And so by creating different structures, in this example, I use electrical solder because it's pliable, it's, it keeps its shape, 
and you can create some kind of uh, metaphorical structure roller coaster track. And at either end of the track, we use Play Doh to act as switches. So, in the uh, scratch space, the idea here is students would make a wand. So, they have a piece of wire with a loop on it, and they have to traverse the track without making contact with the track. So if you think about the game operation from the 80s, it's similar to that in the sense that you don't want to touch the track, okay? And so at the beginning, you would program Scratch to play a sound when you touch the Play-Doh on the left, and that might be when left arrow pressed, play sound, go! And I always encourage students to record their own voice. And so when they touch that Play-Doh, that sound plays through Scratch because it's connected to Makey Makey and Alligator clipped on to left arrow. As you're traversing the track, I connect the track, I alligator clip the track to up arrow, and I usually have the students record their voice saying something like, bad, which is really funny because as they're touching it, you get, bad, 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 and it's hilarious. The kids love it. I think it's absolutely hilarious, and I love posting that stuff on my social media channels when those kids are super into it. And then again, we have a final switch at the end. When you touch that final switch, I have students record themselves saying, stop for example. Now, how is that applicable to the classroom level? Because I teach grades seven and eight. I always use the tools like Makey Makey and the Scratch environment to get kids engaged in writing, reading and writing. So my students are always blogging about what they did. So in this example, I want you to say, recount how you set up the Makey Makey game. Or I want you to write the explanation of how the Makey Makey game works. Or I want you to give me a step-by-step -step procedure of how to play the Make You Make game. So these are different forms of writing that I'm just tweaking ever so subtly to engage students in a beyond the hour of code, computer science kind of activity, but it's being discussed and written about in my English class, in my language arts class. And we're having the conversation about structures, which exists in a lot of our elementary school curriculums. Somebody's audio is on. Do you have it a question? It was me. I turned it on because it, you, you got a little funny sounding from the internet. Uh, just will you repeat a little bit about what you said about the writing aspect of how, what you did for writing? Uh, what did the I actual... Become, yeah, because you, you went blurry. I became the chipmunk, the blurry chipmunk. Yeah, uh, so I don't teach computer science explicitly as a curriculum. I don't have one. I'm a grade seven and eight teacher who teaches math, phys ed, language arts, the arts, things of that nature. So using an activity like the Makey Makey Wire game, I always have students read uh, and write about the activity. We explicitly teach different forms of writing. And so this is a great way to have students write on a blog, perhaps the explanation of how they went about making the game. Or saying recount, you can have students recount how to set up the game. If it's a pr procedural writing activity, you could have students write the steps of how to play the game. So I'm always using these kinds of activities in my math and science class where the kids are building it, but then we're always reading and writing about it because we want to be as cross curricular as possible. And I try to remove the, the bubbles, the silos. I don't want it to be, oh, now it's our language arts period. I want it to be great, your game's done. Can you go put a blog post out to the world? I'll never forget one of the very, very, very first times I used Makey Makey was after the Kickstarter campaign and I had a set and we were playing with it in my classroom. I showed Eric and Jay's Kickstarter video where they did the Mario controller with Play-Doh on paper. And I said to my students, what do you want to do with the Makey Makey? Let's try something cool. And they said, of course, we want to play Mario. So I, I went to the art supply room, we picked up a bunch of sculpting clay, and we went about making the controllers just like Eric and Jay had done in, those, in the video. What we learned was the clay didn't work with Makey Makey. And I thought, this is really bizarre. There's no way I've got a set of Makey Makeys that are all lemons that all can't possibly work. This is really highly improbable. What's going on? Well, it turns out the salt content in Play-Doh is what makes it a conductor. Now, we didn't make that connection, but it was a huge inquiry project that my students were super, super excited to blog about because they wanted to tell the world, hey, Makey Makey is brand new, but if you're going to use it, you need to have some kind of Play-Doh, probably name brand, that is full of salt, or if you're going to make Play-Doh, make sure it's full of salt. So I really love the inquiry piece that this tool uh, brings to the coding computer science 
uh, STEM maker era space, but I'm still being compliant to the initiatives of my school board in terms of what we do in our language arts programs with, with reading uh, and, and writing. Ian tried making his own paint with salt. That's a great idea, actually, because it's a salt content. And then you can make it on site, because as we've all learned, you can't fly in an airplane with Play-Doh on a carry-on because it's a paste. I've had lots of Play-Doh confiscated. Our next activity is one of my favorite for data management. The Makey Makey uh, has become a phenomenal tool for me to capture authentic data. Former Brian Aspinall math teacher would send his students out to collect data by making surveys, pre-Google Forms, pre-Microsoft Forms kind of an era. Send students out, knocking on other classroom doors, all math period, knock, knock, knock. Hi, can we ask a survey of your students? What's your favorite hockey team, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. My grade seven and eight data management curriculum in math classes, mean, median, and mode. Uh, talking about bias in data, collecting data, organizing data, displaying data, as well as, I already mentioned, me, me, mode, and bias, uh, authenticity, and making uh, opinions and interpreting all of that data. Well, I was getting bored with the favorite hockey team survey, the favorite color survey, the favorite pizza topping survey, and we all landed in the Google Classroom space. So I thought, well, Google Forms can do everything we're doing. Why am I having students go out and, and do this? Now, I rightfully so and respectively so, there's nothing wrong with surveys and taking surveys and having kids create surveys. I was just ready for a next step. And because we were studying structures, this I'm tying it back to my science, we were studying structures, different Hot Wheel tracks, make a bit of a roller coaster, make a switch at the top and a switch at the bottom. It could be like a tinfoil flag. Think of it like a flag when you go, when you're skiing in the Olympics and you sort of go through the gate, it triggers a timer. So at the top, you've got a flag connected to Makey Makey, connected to say left arrow and scratch. And we would run Hot Wheels through. So boom, a timer would start at the top. The car would go through the track and it would go through the gate at the bottom, triggering another switch, two other pieces of tinfoil would touch and the timer would stop. Now we've got authentic data created by an app that students have built using the structures content we're doing in science and hooking it up to Makey Makey. So we would run through the roller coaster challenge, say 10, 15, 20 times to get a data set. And then we could do mean, median, and mode, talk about bias. We we're having conversations, kids were collaborating with each other. Why is your track so much faster? Well, let's look at the different structure because after all, we're studying structures. Look at the pitch on that one. You know, what, what angle measurement do you think that pitch is? And what kind of results do you think that would yield? Fantastic way to engage science, reading, writing, and numeracy into a task for kids actually have to build it. You don't need to have Hot Wheel tracks. I was on site once. We actually used, for those of you who aren't in Texas, it gets quite cold up where I'm from. And so we put pipe insulation around our water pipes so they don't freeze in the winter. And so it's a, a cylinder by four feet type of insulation that's flexible and you can tape it to the wall and we would run marbles through the track. And everyone's got marbles or access to marbles. So pipe insulation mounted on our court essentially in the classroom and we would run marbles through the, cork, uh, through the pipe insulation and it would trigger the switches connected to Mickey Mickey, connected to the arrow keys, and then of course connected to uh, <laughs> Chris and his Quebec, eh? So it's way colder in Quebec. Cold in Canada, who'd have thunk? I'll tell you though, in Southern Ontario where I am right now, we still don't have snow, but it is minus five today. Okay, ooh, I'm not going to Quebec, sorry Chris. Classic operation game. This is a brand new activity that was just launched into the labs uh, section on the Makey Makey website. This was created, I have to give a shout out to George Pierce from the Winnipeg School Division, uh, a phenomenal educator, become a great friend of mine in the last couple of years. I follow him very, very closely. I highly recommend you check him out on Twitter. His, his Twitter handle is right at the bottom. He's the teacher who just last Friday spent his Friday evening building the game of operation in his garage inside a cardboard box connected to tinfoil, connected to Makey Makey, because students are studying the human body. And so 
fantastic way to bring more, I'm gonna use the word traditional, I don't like it too, so I'm using the air quotes. A traditional way of presenting content might used to have been on a science poster, for example. Well, this brings it to life. Now you can interact with the different organs and different body parts, and you can hear the kid's audio of uh, an explanation of what each organ does because it's been recorded in Scratch and then connected to Makey Makey using up, down, left, right, your space key and WASG, WAS, WASDFG, looking at my keyboard a little cheap there, uh, on the back of the Makey Makey. So lots of, of opportunity there. Amazing educator, highly recommend you follow. Oh, we're running out of time. Okay, uh, if anything I've learned, I, I'm, I have to end with a quote because I think it's incredibly important. What I have learned is I have removed myself uh, from the front of the classroom. There was a time where I felt I was a curriculum driver, like UPS, rush, 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 from lesson to lesson, activity to activity, throwing out packages, expecting every one of my students to be fully engaged for a seminar because it was a bit of a compliant model. And the more and more I removed myself from the front, the more and more I started to learn my curriculum, I started to recognize my curriculum in everyday things kids were doing. And what I've really learned with the Scratch Sandbox connected to Makey Makey and other peripherals is kids will learn all kinds of skills, fundamental skills that industry is saying our young people need moving forward in life. And I hate to use education as preparation for the next, but that's the reality. At some point, our young people will head into the workforce where problem solving is going to be one of the most fundamental skills, uh, you know, making opinions, collaborating, critical thinking, six C's, whatever jargon buzzword you want to throw on it, it's true. It's absolutely factual. I'm going to finish with two more pieces. Sorry, Tom, but everybody has to check out Tom's TED Talk. It's an amazing story using Makey Makey, incredibly authentic. Uh, if you Google Tom, he Tom Heck TEDx, you will find it. Uh, I did that just an hour ago, Grab this screenshot. It's the first result. One of my favorite, very inspiring. Last but not least, somebody who I have been following for many, 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 many years, who's an incredible inspiration to me, is on this call. If you don't follow Colleen, she is ready at the drop of a hat to help you with anything related to Makey Makey or education in general. And she's written some amazing work as well. On that note, I went two and a half minutes over. I think that's pretty good, Colleen. I think that's pretty I good. Think, you, can you, edit it. you can edit it before <laughs> we put it up, I think. Oh, look, you have my Twitter up. I just noticed it. Uh, well, yeah, follow Colleen. <laughs> I like how you put me and uh, and Tom at the end to embarrass me. I'm really bad at taking compliments. You Are you good at this? Are you good at taking compliments, Brian? No, I, I hated every second of you reading that bio at the beginning. I, <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> I've been there. I know that feeling. Hey, uh, this was super awesome. Uh, we only had one question because uh, I think we have a ton of people who are here um, or we have, we have like a bunch of ambassadors in the thread too, I noticed. But we had a question about the Hot Wheels awesome. guide and if the timers were in scratch, I actually answered it just because I wrote one of those Hot Wheels guides with my husband, Aaron. So I was like, um, yes, they're just timer in scratch. Um, but we are so, so thankful to have you today to, to share your ideas. And um, you gotta get my face off the big screen. No, dang. <laughs> All right, we'll put Tom back. <laughs> yeah, put Tom back. <laughs> there you go, leave it. No, oh, leave it on the no. Alpha Cohen thing. Um, All right. We really, really appreciate you. And what we're going to do um, is upload this to our YouTube channel. We'll write a blog post. We'll put all the links to the books. Um, if you guys haven't gotten Brian's Code Breaker book, you need to go out and get it. It's a really great read. He does talk a lot about the foundation um, of why problem solving is needed and why like hands-on learning is important. So uh, we're just really thankful that you came and shared your time with us today. I'm grateful. I think it, this is, I, it's just inspiring. I just want to get off and go write another blog post about a new Makey Makey activity. Oh, that's fun. And you know, I just love that we're Twinkies today. Like I yep. don't, I don't get to do this too often. We're in the same shirts as, as others. Uh, and everyone who's jealous of the shirts, Tom and I have tried so hard to be able to offer our shirts on our shop and you hey, got to turn my video on so I can show oh, my shirt. I'm so on sorry. Here, let me get Tom, Tom's video on. You know how many people have offered to buy this from me? 
people want to buy this off my back. Not because of me, because the shirt. They want to buy the shirt when I'm out at conferences. It's awesome. That is See? funny. Yeah, uh, we're we're actually working on getting shirts that we can send. We can give to people when we're at conferences because we know everyone loves our shirts. Uh, <laughs> Chris, you have to wash it. That's gross. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you Twitter DM and beg, you know, you might be able to to talk one of us into sending you the shirt off our back. No, I'm just kidding. You can bet you definitely have stickers though. <laughs> we do have stickers and well again, we'll just send them to you. So uh thank you so much for being with us today. Brian, I hope you have a lovely day today. <laughs> hey, I yeah, and I also uh, I want to uh just uh, uh make a, a suggestion. If anyone has um a suggestion for Colleen and I about a guest to have on, someone you'd like to hear. That's a good idea. Please let us know. And we'll do what we can to convince that person to jump on this uh, video call with us and so that you can learn from them and we can learn from them and create little videos so the rest of the world can learn from them. Yeah, actually, Tom and I are working on a webinar calendar for the whole rest of the year. Our goal is to host one a, one a month. I know, Brian's like, I have another call. I gotta go. <laughs> no, that's, I'm, I love the idea of the monthly webinars. Love it. Yeah, so we're gonna work, we're working on that calendar and we, we, uh, we'll be sharing that on our blog soon too. So if you haven't been, because this is the part that I always forget to do, you've gotta go to uh, labs.makeymakey.com and you'll find the wire game uh, plant guide and you can find the car tracks, the Hot Wheels tracks, and you can find operation. Uh, we have the old guide from Josh Berker. My dog just came to say hello. And we also have uh, the new guide by George. So that's really cool. I noticed that you were friends. Is he from Canada too? He's George? from beautiful Winnipeg, Manitoba, where they probably have 12 feet of snow and it's minus 30. Winterpeg, Manitoba, we call it. We, we have a lot of Makey evangelists in Canada. Um, so we really, we, we want you guys to go check out Labs uh, because we've got a lot of new content on there. That's where I'm putting all my content and you can like favorite things. And once you favorite them, which just makes people feel good, right? Like I may not be able to take compliments, but I do like it when I get a little heart next to my, my Labs guide or on a tweet. But you can actually go back and find those again. So it's a really cool way to like kind of keep track of what you want to do. And you can now sync, it's synced with Google Classroom. So you can assign guides to your students through Google Classroom, which anybody who's using Google Classroom, that's totally amazing. Um, the Workbench was actually just acquired by Google, which is not surprising. So um, that's all really good and it's really safe. And I like to, to point out because as someone who taught middle school and elementary and high school, uh, it's a very safe place. Tom and I look at every guide before they're approved. So it's not like going to YouTube or Instructables where weird stuff's gonna pop up. It's totally uh, made for classroom use. So enjoy. Uh, and that's labs.makeymakey.com. And make sure you get Brian's book. And you guys have a great day. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Thanks for joining everybody. us.